Hi everyone, I'm Taylor. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I talk about my life in Malaysia. A while ago, I did a video on things that I thought were different in Malaysia compared to the US. Well, you really liked that. And since then, I put together a bunch more things that I noticed that are different. So I hope you're interested in seeing much more that I've observed here. Stay tuned. So let's get on with what else is different about Malaysia. One thing I found out since my last video was that the reason so much of this is different to me is that it's mostly based on the UK. I had many UK viewers tell me, well, that's not so different. That's just like the UK. I guess that makes sense since Malaysia was a British colony for so long, but it didn't occur to me because I'm not that familiar with British habits either. But anyway, probably some of these things I'm going to mention today also are quite common in the UK. You let me know. Put it in the comments. Okay, I'm going to start out with restaurants today. Now, I think, as I've mentioned before, and like probably everyone knows here, is that it's just cheaper to eat out in restaurants. I don't know why, because it's not in the United States, I don't think. But here, even good, good food is often less expensive in a restaurant than it is to make at home. It sure is a lot less trouble, I can tell you that. As you all know, I do enjoy cooking, so I still cook at home, but when I go to the grocery store and when I check out, the bill is sometimes like over a hundred ringgit. Well, I could easily eat out for less than that. So it's sort of crazy to just cook at home. Another thing I've noticed that was in Penang and I thought it was just a Penang thing, but it's not, it's in KL too, is lunch rush hour. People like to get in their car and go someplace for lunch. So you have this midday traffic jam everywhere. I don't get it at all. For one thing in the US, I usually either brought my lunch or just went somewhere really close by to where I work to get something to eat. But people seem to like to make a big deal of going out to lunch here. It's kind of nice, I guess, to sort of spend midday relaxing, but it's not what I'm used to. And if I was working here, I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't want to get in those traffic jams all the time. Another thing I've noticed with Chinese food, at least the names anyway, is it bears no resemblance to anything I'm familiar with in the United States. So I've been very confused and I really need someone Chinese to take me around and explain what each thing is. Now, of course, I know what char kway tiao is, but you know, it took me like six months to learn how to say it. And there's all kinds of other Chinese food that I don't understand. I understand that mi means noodle, but there's so many things that I just don't know what they are. A lot of things that say fun in them. And I don't know what fun is in Chinese food. Could somebody explain it to me? Maybe someone could direct me to a list and that shows what everything is called and what actually is in it. That would be really helpful to me. I'd appreciate it a lot. I actually researched one of my favorite Chinese dishes in the US, which is General Tao's chicken. Well, that really doesn't exist here or in China, I don't think, but you should try it if you ever get to the US. It's delicious. It's like chicken that's sort of battered, coated and cooked, but in an orange glaze. It's yummy. I wish they had it here. Another thing I've noticed in restaurants is they cut up the meat strangely. Now I saw this in wet markets where they just take a butcher knife and just hack at the meat, especially the chicken. But what happens is you get little shards of bone. And if you don't clean that properly before you cook it, you're gonna get little pieces of bone in your mouth. And I don't really like that. I've gotten used to it, but I'm used to in the US where they take a lot of care when they cut up meat and make sure they cut it like between the joints. So you have recognizable pieces of chicken. It's a small thing and I've gotten used to it, but I just thought I'd mention it. Another thing I've noticed that's really kind of irritating, in my opinion, is that when you're in a restaurant, they don't bring everyone's food at the same time. Now in the US, of course, I guess when they're in the kitchen, some things get ready before others, but they keep it in the kitchen under a warming light and then bring everything to the table at the same time. I mean, I'm sort of embarrassed if my food comes, I don't want to start eating it before the other people's food come. And that can make my food get cold or vice versa, whoever I'm with. 
but it just seems to be the custom here. As soon as they get a dish done, they bring it out. But I sort of like it when the whole table gets their food at the same time. What about you? Now, I like yellow corn as much as the next person, but I have never seen anywhere where you can get for a snack a little cup of yellow corn. Now, I haven't bought any, but I do see people getting it all the time. It must be a treat. But in the US, corn is just corn, and it's just a side dish you have with meat or something. I don't know, maybe I should try it. Maybe there's something really special about it. But I just thought that was different. Also, I've seen a number of dogs inside restaurants. Now in the US, you might see a dog on a leash at a sidewalk cafe or something outdoors, but never inside unless it's a seeing eye dog. But here I see them fairly frequently. I have a picture here of these, this cute dog we saw in a restaurant. It doesn't bother me. Again, it's just different. Now I'm gonna talk about a couple things in the apartment. I mentioned before how the light switches are opposite here, up is down and down is up, or up is on, on, on or up is down, and I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, another thing I've noticed is that people say, instead of saying, turn on the light, they say, open the light, or close the light. And in the US, we say, turn on the light, or turn off the light, or it could be any other thing that you turn on or off, but they say open or close. In the US, we would just say open or close the door or open or close the cabinet, but not things like lights. So it confused me at first, but I've gotten used to it. Aside from hardly having any dishwashers here, which I've mentioned before, one thing I really, really miss is a garbage disposal. I guess they're probably available, although I've never seen anyone who had one. But it's this thing that you goes in the bottom of your sink and when you have leftover food, you just shove it all down in there, it grinds it up, and then it just goes down in the drain with the water. Even in the US, there's issues with it, like it clogs up the pipes a lot. But I've never seen one here. Do any of you have a garbage disposal? It's really handy because you don't have to keep this ooky food in a bag and then take it out to the trash quickly. Another thing I've noticed, in the US, tile, ceramic tile, is expensive and used very sparingly. Here, the bathrooms have like tiles up to the ceiling and not just in the shower. So I think that's cool. Actually, it's a very luxurious touch for me. If there's tile on the wall in the US, it's usually just around the shower. Okay, a couple things about banking. Wow, some things are really different about banking here, like the ease of transferring money to someone else. In the US, if you want to do it, you have to do it during bank hours. Here you can do it any time, day or night, and it instantly transfers the money to someone else. And there's no charge for it. In the US, they charge you each time you do it, which is ridiculous when you think about it. And why should you have to wait for the bank to be open? Everything is electronic. Everything goes 24 hours. Why don't the banks? I don't get it. Another thing here that's different is that it seems to be really difficult to get a credit card. In the U.S., they just throw them at you. Oh my gosh. I mean, I've had as many as eight at one time. And you can get into trouble with that. And I think that's the whole intention, is that you go bankrupt and then, I don't know. I don't know what their intention is, really. But you really have to be very careful not to overdo it. Here, they make sure you can pay it back before they give you a credit card, which is probably a really good thing. One thing that's similar, is that when you use the ATM at a bank that's not your own, you do pay a fee here, just like in the United States. Now a little bit about cars and driving. I've been so impressed with how well people seem to take care of their cars here and how long they keep them for. In the US, I think it's strange if you have a car longer than five years, and that would be a long time. But here, people seem to keep them really long time, but you can't really tell because they take such good care of them that you can't see how old it is. Also, way different than the US, is people are respectful of other people's cars. In the US, everyone has like dings in their doors all up and down the side from people parking next to you and just slamming their door into you. That would never happen here. People are so careful not to touch your car. And bumpers too. When you parallel park in the US, people just bump, bump, bump right into your car. And they don't care that they're scratching up your bumper. 
here people would be horrified if they touched your bumper. And you don't see all scratched up bumpers here. It's really different, but I think way better. So much more respectful to the other person. I also think that mechanics and car repairs and even motorcycle repairs are more fair here. The prices seem better and I really trust them not to try to rip me off. In the US, oh my gosh, they can really rip you off. I think it all boils down to that the Malaysian culture is just more trustworthy. And like with banging the car doors, it just goes back to respect. One other thing that's different about cars here, and this I'm sure is probably the same in the UK and where it came from, is that your car tag never changes here, even if you sell it or move. Now in the US, the car tag is really attached to the owner of the car and not the car. Of course, it describes the car that you have, but if you sell it, the tag doesn't go with it. The new owner gets their own tag. And if you move to a different state, you have to get a new tag that has that state's name on it. Here, you know, you see tags and you know where they're from, like P means Penang. But like when I moved to KL, mine still says P and always will, I guess. <laughs> I do think the streets here are way more confusing in the US. More places in the US seem to have a grid pattern for their streets. Here the streets just seem to meander around and you'll be, think you're going in the right direction then you'll just come to a dead end. In the US, it's more laid out like a grid. I'll show you here. But I think it's probably because the city grew sort of organically, at least in KL and Penang too for that matter. But I know I have a terrible time finding my way around here. And I've noticed that even Malaysians or people who are very familiar with their city use GPS all the time. I never used it in the US. Once I learned where something was, I could find it again. It was easy. I haven't quite gotten that down since I've lived here though. A few other things that are different. You have monitor lizards, we have alligators. I guess monitor lizards are probably sweeter, although sweet probably isn't the word for a monitor lizard, but at least they don't eat you up like alligators do. I don't know, do they have alligators here? They might. Let me know. One thing I don't really understand with the TV is that Netflix has completely different content here than it does in the US. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap, but there's a lot of things you can't get here that's available in the US. I don't quite understand why they do that. I don't know if it has to do with the censorship here or not. I don't think so because you see some things on Netflix that typically would be censored here. So I don't know why it is. And it's the same with Amazon Prime. You just get a smaller choice here. Not a big deal, just an observation. Another thing I had to get used to right away when I moved here is that in stores, when you buy something, it's yours. Don't even think about returning it. And I think that's why, like when you buy something electronic, they plug it in and show you that it works. In the US, you can return anything practically. You can even wear clothes and like wear them to an event or something and then return them the next day. I don't think it's right, but people do do that. And I think Malaysia really is a little strict with the no return policy. I mean, something could be broken later or very soon after you buy it. And then you're stuck with dealing with a stupid warranty, which is just so irritating. I think what it does do is it makes you be really sure you want to buy something before you buy it because you know you're not going to get to take it back. I do think some labeling could be improved here too like between paper towels and tissues. Now look at this package here. Do you see anywhere on it where it says what it is? You know, it, it has some descriptive words, but it doesn't say tissue or paper towels. Now I happen to think these are paper towels, but I'm not sure. So I think they could improve on that. But also what happens is that I'll just buy Kleenex because at least I know what a Kleenex is just because it's a brand name. It's kind of silly, but they can improve that, I think. Another thing that I think is nice, and it's just a function of being closer to the equator, I guess, is that the days are almost always 12 hours long all year round. In the US, it varies widely. In the summer, it can stay light till like nine o'clock at night or later in some areas. I think that would be a nightmare here because at least when the sun goes down, you know it's gonna cool off a little. And no such thing as daylight savings time where you'd have to change your clock forward or backward. Mm, it's always so confusing. 
I've also noticed how clean everything is in Malaysia, the streets included. I often see people out sweeping the streets. Now, I guess they're municipal employees, and that's their job, which doesn't sound like a particularly fun job, if you ask me, but at least they're keeping the streets clean. It's wonderful. Now, I have noticed there's a decided lack of public trash cans here on the streets. In the US, they're everywhere, often overflowing, but at least there's a place to throw stuff away. Here, I don't know, I just keep it in my bag or something and throw it away when I get home. Maybe that's the whole idea. Another wonderful thing here in Malaysia is almost everyone is bilingual at least. At least they know two languages, possibly more, and a lot of people know way more than two. That's so impressive and so different than the US. As I've mentioned before, I'm terrible at new languages, so I'm just stuck with English. Luckily, I can get by just fine here with just English. Another huge difference between the US and here is there's hardly any homeless. I'm not even sure I've ever seen any homeless people here. But in the US, they're like cities of them in tents. It's really sad. I don't understand why the government in the US doesn't try to take care of that problem. I guess they try to do stuff, but it's really bad. And I just don't see that here. Also, beggars. I don't see beggars here. People that just come up to you on the street and ask for money for nothing. I mean, I guess there are poor people I have seen around that sell things like popcorn they've made at home or little snacks and things like that. But at least they're giving you something, not just asking for a handout for free money. So I think that's really nice. This last thing is of huge importance to me because it's so different than the US. It's respect for the elderly. Hmm? Yes, I'm elderly and I really appreciate it. People are really kind to elderly people here and take care of them. In the US, they just think they're tiresome and bothersome and they don't have time for them. I mean, you can even date still when you're elderly. I guess you can in the US too, but not nearly like you can here. But people really take care of their elderly and their parents and grandparents. They'll keep them at home until they die usually. I don't think the nursing home or retirement home industry is nearly as big here as it is in the US, where kids tend to just shove their parents away and don't want to deal with them anymore. It's sad. It's really sad. And I think it's extremely admirable that Malaysia doesn't treat their old folks that way, including me. Okay, as you know, I've lived here for eight years. So I've had a long time to observe the differences. And I keep coming up with more. Now, I think I've done a pretty good job between the two videos of pretty much all I can think of, but I bet I can come up with more, and if I do, I'll update this video. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you think I've gotten anything wrong. Thanks for watching today, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. A lot of you aren't subscribing. I see you're watching, but you're not subscribing. Please subscribe. It really helps me. Thanks so much. I have to say that since my email is working properly now, I've actually met with people who watch my channel. And I'm gonna start interviewing some of them and put that on here. I think it'll be interesting to see why they moved to Malaysia too. So look forward to that. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I didn't mean to, that's never my intention. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot and talk to you later. Bye.